Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at um, parallel systems. And uh, we're going to understand what we mean by the word parallel, what parallel computing really is, um, different ways it can be achieved, and also we're going to be looking at um, the difference between running processes at the same time and a true parallel system. Before we really get started, we're going to be looking at something called Flynn's taxonomy. Now, this isn't technically on the spec, but what I have noticed in past years is that these acronyms kind of crop up in the mark schemes every now and then. Okay, specifically uh, this one and this one. Okay, uh, this one, if I'm honest with you, more often than not. So, Flynn's taxonomy is just a way of categorizing different types of computers. Okay, so. A single instruction, single data is one that we're very much used to. That's the von Neumann architecture. We've been talking about that quite a lot already. Um, but I might have a situation where I run one instruction on lots of different processors at the same time, uh, but on different data. So that would be a known as um, a SIMD, or a SIMD. But also I might have a situation where I have multiple instruction, multiple data. Uh, multiple instruction, multiple data means that each processor is running a different instruction on different data. The one in the, the one here, um, multiple instruction, single data, isn't really used. It, there's not many situations where you want to do the same, uh, you know, different instructions on the same data at the same time. Okay, it would cause quite a lot of problems. So, what do we mean by parallel? A single processing uh, unit, i.e. a CPU or a single core within a CPU, can only do one thing at once. Okay? It can run one instruction, it can do one fetch, one decode, one execute, that's it. So if I had lots of different processes, for example, um, I would have to swap them in and out really quickly. Okay, So we kind of explored multitasking already. Um, but if I have more of them, so if I have lots of CPUs, in this case I've got four CPUs, I can do four instructions at the same time. So each one of these can run a process separately and they all run at the same time which will obviously mean I don't know why I put P4 uh, there instead but there you go can't count um, so you know each one is going to run a different one so when we talk about parallel computing what we're really talking about is the ability to run multiple instructions at the same time that's what we mean by parallel so how can we achieve it? Well, there's four main ways we can do it. Um, we can use a distributed operating system. Uh, we can use a CPU with multiple cores, which we've already looked at. Uh, a GPU with multiple cores um, or multiple floating point units. Uh, or a computer which has multiple processors, which in turn may even have multiple cores as well. So let's look at each of those. Now, um, distributed operating system, um, this is going to be covered in a later uh, video because it's it's part of the AS specification of the operating systems. However, I'm just very briefly going to introduce it. This is where um, I might have lots and lots of different computers all working together to form a single logical computer. So it's the same as if I've got an IT lab and got 10 computers inside it. All of those computers kind of like linked together in the network and they kind of act as if they're one single computer. This essentially allows me to make use of their cores, make use of all those separate CPUs to work together in parallel. Um, Multi-core CPUs, we've spent quite a lot of time looking at this, so I'm not going to spend a huge much time on it. So again, uh, we can do multiple processing with it. Uh, so for example, if uh, the Galaxy S8 uh, has eight cores, uh, which means it can run eight instructions at the same time, i.e. it can run eight processes at the same time. Multi-core CPUs will have a single CPU which contains cores. So um, when I've got multi-core, it's just going to have a single CPU, so a single uh, uh, circuit, which inside will have all those cores. Now, GPUs is going to be covered in depth in A2, so this is kind of just introducing it as another way of doing parallel systems. I'm not going to explain it in a huge amount of detail, but GPUs are graphics uh, processing units. They're found on graphics cards, such as the ones made by ATI and NVIDIA. So you, if you're a gamer uh, and you've got a gaming PC at home, you're probably very familiar with what graphics um, card is and GPUs are. Um, and what they are is they contain thousands and thousands of very simple processing units known as floating point units, FPUs. Now these flip, uh, FPUs are very good at doing floating point calculations, i.e. decimal calculations. So they're good at trigonometry, they're good at um, uh, matrix 
maths. They're very good at all the kind of maths that's needed to display 3D graphics. However, I can use them for more general purpose. Now, I'm going to clarify what I mean by general purpose here. I don't mean it can run Windows. Okay, you can't have a graphics card running Windows. Um, it's not good at that kind of stuff. It's not able uh, to very quickly and efficiently run normal programs. But what it is very good at is running this floating point stuff. Okay, so if I have a problem which needs lots of floating point calculations, then I could use a GPU to help solve it. It doesn't necessarily have to be graphics. Multi CPUs, um, so this is similar to cores where I have a single computer but inside it I have lots of processors, okay, and they tend to be servers. Now, a server uh, will have multiple pro processes inside it, but each process itself might also have multiple cores. So, for example, um, the Intel Xeon, uh, now Xeon is a, a, the CPU that tends to be used in servers, um, and that model number has 10 cores, each running at 2 gigahertz. So, if I had eight of them, then I'm going to have 80 processor cores. Okay, so servers will have uh, a high amount of um, uh, processing cores, all done through lots of CPUs. Now, in order to help explain some of these ideas, because I've kind of briefly done it, uh, gone over them, um, there's a number of videos on this slide which you may want to have a look at to help you understand some of those kind of core concepts, specifically GPUs. Now, not, it's a good time to pause and make some notes. Um, so define the term parallel. Um, listen, explain the different ways that power systems can be implemented. Um, so those four different ways and explain what each of them are. Uh, again, I, I suggest you watch those videos just to help you explain what they are. Um, so the two main categories when it comes to parallel systems. First of all, enabling multiple processes to, run, uh, to be run more efficiently or processing a single complex process. It's important to be able to recognize these scenarios, okay? So the exams are going to be scenario-driven. So if they give you scenarios such as, um, you know, Little Johnny uh, is really antivirus and media player and all lots of different programs at the same time, um, explain how parallel processing can help him, you're talking about being able to run multiple processes uh, more efficiently, okay? So you talk about multi-core processing. However, if they give a snow such as um, um, Sally is running a scientific experiment um, where she has gigabytes of data which needs processing, we're talking about the second one, processing a single complex process. Okay? They're normally fairly obvious which one it's talking about. You just need to be able to kind of use a bit of common sense really and, and, and identify. So, um, Single process, if I do have a single process, um, what really, it's really important to kind of clarify what I mean a bit. This will help when you identify scenarios. So examples might be 3D rendering. So if you've ever watched Toy Story or Frozen, or any of those kind of uh, Pixar or, uh, um, I forget the other one now actually, it's off my head. So like Pixar films, um, then they require a lot of 3D calculations. So um, a, a really good example of how GPUs can help as well. Um, so they're going to be doing lots of uh, 3D rendering. Um, they take a lot of processing time. Scientific simulations um, can also be incredibly complex and uh, will link very much into data crunching. So data crunching, um, and scientific simulations will go hand in hand. So a lot of scientific simulations will have a lot of data which will require uh, in order to actually get the answers. Again, these will take a lot of processing time and could take days, weeks, months, years to be able to calculate it. Now I've got a link here, uh, which you may want to have a look at, which has 12 ways you can donate your spare processing time. Now the reason I've included that is because um, in order um, to give you ex clear examples of these two points here, um, I'm using this, okay? So the 12 ways are effectively 12 ways of doing parallel processing, okay? Because if I'm giving up part of my CPU time and you're giving up part of your CPU time to help with this project and thousands of other people doing the same thing, but they're all working together to help solve a single problem, okay? So we've got that parallelism. Uh, so it's good to actually maybe look at these uh, to get some examples. So let's really delve into what we mean by single process par parallelism. So if I've got a problem, a really complex problem, the first thing I need to do is split it up into smaller tasks, okay? So I need to be able to say, okay, 
this process is going to be doing one part of the task, this process is going to be doing another part, and so on and so forth. So I can I basically easily spread the problem out to different processes. Okay, so I can call those subtasks. So each subtask can be processed by a different processor. Each processor will then compute an intermediate answer. Now, they're not going to come up with the final answer. Okay, they're just going to come up with a part answer because they've only got part of the data, part of the problem. Um, then, once each of those intermediate steps have been completed, we need a single processor which will bring the intermediate results together. Okay, and, and then we'll get the final results. So parallel program algorithms are really complex to write um, and require complex operating systems to run it. Now the key advantages of them, obviously um, solutions to problems can be solved much faster due to them being done in parallel. So that's the really the core advantage of them. Okay, and it's a fairly obvious advantage. Notice I have split it up into two points. Uh, in past exams, uh, that's how uh, they, they've been split up, okay, so into two marks, which is why I've done it like that. Um, disadvantages, um, the operating system needs to be complex, okay. The reason for that is because it needs to be able to manage all these different cores, be to do all the scheduling behind it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's not just, it's not going to be a simple operating system. Um, parallel algorithms are difficult to code. Um, in A2, you can have a little bit of practice of using threads. Um, and that's kind of be your first introduction to parallel processing. Um, and you'll find very quickly it's not easy. Um, so they're, they're very difficult to code these parallel process uh, algorithms. Uh, and a single process is still needed to get the final answer. So if I can't take advantage of parallelism by splitting it up and making best use of that, and I still have to have a serial uh, problem at the end of it, then I'm not going to get any advantage. So it's also worth um, making a, a differentiation now between um, SIMD and uh, MIMD. Uh, so a process which makes use of parallel processing tends to involve a lot of data crunching. So when we're talking about um, a single process, a single complex process, we tend to have a lot of data. So for example, with 3D rendering, uh, all the data is each scene of the, of the animation. Um, and there's going to be a lot of data there. So a lot of scientific things will have a lot of data, uh, which means it's very likely I'm going to do the same thing but on lots of different parts of day. So I'm going to do the same kind of rendering, but on different scenes or different frames of the animation. I'm doing lots of data crunching on different parts of the data in scientific calculations. Okay, so we most likely are going to be using um, SIMD. Okay, so single instruction, do the same instruction on every core, multiple data, but on different data. Multiple instruction, multiple data. This is where I've got different instruction running on different data. This is more the hallmark of the next example which I'm going to look at, which is where I've got different processes all doing different things but running on different uh, cores. So, good time to pause to kind of make notes on that one because that's the more complex version of it. Uh, so, find one example. Uh, of a problem which requires parallel processing. So those 12 examples on the previous slide, you might want to have a, a, have one of those or pick your own. And then explain how parallel processing can be achieved. Now, I'm going to make a, 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 a clear point that this was actually used as an exam question uh, before. It was used for um, uh, looking at, um, think about it, it's uh, with film pr processing, so looking at each uh, part of a film. Um, and special effects, I think that's it, special effects. Um, so, you know, these kind of things can come up. So, explain how power process can be achieved, exemplify it with your chosen problem. So, you're applying uh, your knowledge back into that example uh, and then get the advantage disadvantage in there. So if we're looking at multitasking, then um, this tends to be multi-core. Okay, so we don't tend to do this kind of stuff on some of the other way, uh, other methods of doing parallel processing. Um, so each core will run a separate process. Um, so in this scenario here, I've got my dual core process with two cores, and I've got six processes. What will have to happen is we need to then allocate um, these processes to different cores. So here's one way I could allocate it. So I've got core one running these three processes over here, and I've got core two running these three over here. Okay. Um, as these are being um, implemented and run, um, then the situation might change. It might be that this process swaps over to core two or vice versa. If I had quad core, then again, I could allocate the process out again. 
um, and, and I achieve better parallelism. Okay, so in this case, um, each call has less work to do. So we've got two calls running two processes, and the other two calls only running one. Okay, the scheduling of this is going to be uh, um, run by the operating system, and we're going to look at scheduling in a bit more detail in the operating system units. However, we're not going to be looking at how scheduling is done over multiple processes or multiple process calls, should I say. So advantages of doing it this way, <coughs> excuse me, uh, most modern systems will have a lot of processes running at the same time. Okay, so it's very common to have 10, 20, 100 processes on a, a normal computer. So being able to run these in parallel improves system performance. Um, swapping processes, so that is where I've got a single processor uh, we're running two processes. Um, they're swapping them in and out. Takes time. You know, it's not as it's not an immediate operation to swap two processes. There's a bit of overhead, uh, extra time. So if I can minimise that by minimising the amount of swaps I need to do, then that's going to improve system performance. Disadvantages: um, we get no speed improvement whatsoever for a single process. So a single process is not going to run any faster because it's only going to run on single core. However, if I code it to make advantage, take advantage of all these calls, then obviously I am going to get that benefit. Uh, it's only useful if there's a large number of processes running simultaneously. If I've only got one or two, it makes no difference really. It's, I'm not going to get any advantages. Uh, and not all processes need processing time. Okay, So I might have lots of processing running uh, on the system, but they might all be idle. So I won't get much benefit in that scenario either. So just kind of a, as to finish off this um, uh, system, um, if you draw a CPU with six cores, um, how could 14 processes be allocated over the six cores? So go to draw a diagram to represent that in a similar way of the previous slides. Explain how parallelism can be achieved when dealing with multiple processes and note down those advantages and disadvantages. So just to finish off, subject clarification, see there's three points here. So candidates need to understand what is meant by a parallel system and the benefits and limitations of it. Candidates need to understand that parallel processing can be achieved through different, multiple different ways. Um, so multiple processes on the same computer, uh, distributed or multiple cores. Candidates need to understand the benefits of a multi-core system in terms of power processing and running multiple programs. This is why I've kind of split up this presentation in that way.